Shogun is back this week with episode 3 and following the first two episodes, which made the show get praised extremely highly for its debut, it had a lot to live up to, and it most certainly didn't disappoint with its return. Focusing on betrayal, the life one leads when they're on their own when they have to navigate who they can trust, and the Anjin and Torinaga's relationship growing closer and there being a level of mutual respect, like was the case in the real events with Tokugawa and William Adams, the people that the story is based on. Let's delve into this episode and break down all things Shogun Episode 3. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode started off with us seeing that Yabushigi was writing a letter of goodwill, something which he defined as his best yet. This was before he was escorted to meet with Toranaga following the assassination attempt that was carried out on John Blackthorne at the end of the previous episode. Toranaga received intel that Lord Ishido met with Yabushigi at his home, something which was the case. Yabushigi was under the impression that Toranaga was going to kill him when they met with one another, but he decided to spare him instead. During this encounter, we found out about the assassins and that they were sworn by the most sacred oaths of the Buddha Amida. The Amida Buddha is the name of the Pure Land Buddha and the Buddha of Limitless Light. This is considered important in Pure Land Buddhism because it's his pure land that his followers are reborn into when they die. Yabushigi is definitely playing a game when it comes to Ishido and picking sides. In the first episode, it felt like he was on the side of Toranaga. However, the fact that he was meeting with Ishido spoke volumes. There was actually a line that Toranaga said at the end of the episode where he mentioned, you are playing a game of friends and enemies when you only have yourself in this life. This shows us that Toranaga quite literally has nobody that he feels as though he can trust. So he's treating his enemies as his friends in order to keep them closer and to truly know what it is that's going on, in case there is a sense of betrayal. Within the first two episodes last week, we heard that Toranaga was to be confined in Osaka whilst he waited the verdict on his impeachment where he'd find out if he'd be facing death for the alleged kidnapping of Lady Ochiba. But during this episode, a plan was devised by Toranaga to get him out of the city and back to his land of Edo. It was made out like Lady Kiri was going to be travelling out of the city, when in actual fact there was a sneaky moment where she slipped out and was replaced by Toranaga. It was only when they got close to the harbour and were in the woods where they were ambushed by more assassins that were trying to kill John that we saw that that was Toranaga's plan to get out of the city. During this episode, before they left the castle, there was a moment where we saw the two swords of the samurai. I feel this was done to show us the direction that a certain character is going to be heading in during the show and the eventual position that one will find themselves in. I won't say too much right now, but I feel that was the importance of it being shown to us in the episode, as it was only brief. And something at the end did connect to that too, but I'll get to that. Once they were inside of the woods, we saw more bonding occurring between Mariko and John Blackthorne, and it definitely feels like something's going to be occurring between the both of them in the show in a romantic way. Her husband, Toda Hirokatsu, was known as a strong and admired warrior, but there was a sense of fear that was present between Mariko and him, which is what we saw in their interaction. She does seem to be more at ease with John Blackthorne, and they were bonding over just natural conversation of getting to know each other more and more and the land that John came from. During this conversation, we found out that John had two children back at home in England, a son called Tudor and a daughter called Elizabeth. In real life, William Adams, who John Blackthorne was based on, did actually have two children back in England. One was called John, funnily enough, and the other was called Deliverance. Within the real events, William Adams did actually go on to marry a Japanese woman. So I feel this show is hinting towards it potentially being Mariko, as there's definitely a romantic spark there and he's the only person that seems to put a smile on her face. But it all depends how close this show is sticking to the real events, as that might not even end up happening. The battle that took place in the woods stuck true to the level of action that we expect to see in the show. There was some great choreography where we saw John Blackthorne and Mariko getting involved as they were severely outnumbered. It was during this scene as well that we saw that Toda Hirokatsu was left behind on the harbour and fought off several men to ensure his survival at that point. But when he was left on his own, Toranaga stood up, looked at him, and it was almost as if Toda was accepting his death. Just like how we saw Yabashigi doing it in the sea in the previous episode where he was going to turn the sword towards himself. With Toda running towards the men that were trying to take him out and him battling them on his own. Although he was outnumbered, what do they always say? If you don't see a character die, then you can't assume that they're dead. So I'm going to predict that Toda Hirokatsu managed to survive. With him being respected and considered a strong warrior, could Lord Ishido put poison in the ear of him and get him to change sides? 
we saw that Yabashigi was playing games, somebody who actually seems to be close to Toronaga, so it wouldn't surprise me if that happened. During this moment too, we saw John Blackthorn almost be in awe of the service and sacrifice that Toda was making. Just like what happened in episode 1 where Yabashigi was prepared to die, so John is definitely gaining more respect for Japanese people and culture compared to when he thought of them as savages when he first arrived. With Toronaga needing a safe passageway out of the city due to there being boats waiting for them in the dark in the distance, it meant that Toronaga had to negotiate a deal with the Portuguese Catholic priests and also the Captain General of the Black Ship. The Captain General was originally told that he didn't have permission to leave, but under these circumstances, Toronaga was obviously allowing it and in return, he was going to give 10,000 silver coins to the captain and also allow the priests to set up a Christian church in Edo. Something which is a big deal for Toronaga as he isn't a Christian and he hasn't been converted by the Jesuits and Catholics. They agreed to the deal but they said that John Blackthorne needed to stay behind, for obvious reasons because they didn't want a Protestant on board and going with them. And when they said that, they handed Toronaga the diaries that were taken from John in the first two episodes, the diaries which confirmed that he was a pirate. With John Blackthorne being left behind, we saw that he wasn't prepared to sit there and wait to die, so he followed up the side of them where he reaped the benefit of the black ship destroying many of the boats in the way, which created the passageway. It was here where we got some great moments between Rodriguez and John Blackthorne, jokingly mocking each other and being harsh to each other in jest. This moment confirmed how good of a pilot John Blackthorne actually was as he navigated through extremely tight, tough terrain and didn't have a single injury or injured crewman on board. Rodriguez was tasked with ramming the ship into John so that it'd crash, but he chose not to. Rodriguez said that the debt had been repaid, and the debt that Rodriguez was in was that John Blackthorne was the person who got Yabashigi to go down to the cliffside and rescue him, showing that he was prepared to save his life once. So in this instance, Rodriguez did the same. It was a nice moment for sure and showed the aura that John Blackthorne had about him and the natural respect that he could generate. Back in Osaka, there was actually quite a humorous moment which was going on between the Council of Regents where Hiramatsu arrived and informed Ishido that Toronaga had resigned from the council. Ishido mentioned how it didn't matter and how it would be voted for him to be charged with more. But Hiramatsu reminded him that it wouldn't be possible because the Taiko required five regents to vote and there were now only four, so it made it impossible. Ishido is definitely going to be bringing the war to Toronaga following this and it's something that I can't wait to see. Whilst on the ship, Toronaga had grown fond of John and respected the type of person and warrior that he was, so much so that he called John Hatamoto, something which is a great honor. Hatamoto was said to be the guardian of the banner and was a high-ranking samurai in the service of the Tokugawa shogunate, so we're seeing the levels of respect getting developed between the pair. He no longer wanted John to be referred to as a barbarian as he didn't see that fit when he'd already given so much in service of being a warrior and fighting. So in return, John asked for his men to be freed, something which did happen in real life and they were eventually given permission to go back to England. Overall review. I thought this was a great third episode of the show. Shogun has established a world in a real natural way, introduced us to characters that already feel so fleshed out and have transported us back to a time period and location that hasn't been explored much on TV in recent times. The pacing and stakes feel so high at all points and I think that really adds to the feeling that you get when watching the episodes, especially this one. Every location, there was a chance that Toronaga, John, Mariko and the rest of them were going to be killed, but somehow they managed to escape. I think the performances in the show are quite strong. The only one I'm a bit so-so on is John Blackthorne. I think he's good in some moments, but in the more intimate conversations with Mariko, the dialogue delivery just feels a bit questionable. I don't know whether that's because he's just trying to embody what somebody would have sounded like at the time, but there's a sense of melodrama to the delivery of his lines sometimes and almost an overperformance. Other than that though, I think the performances are really strong. With Toronaga going to Edo and John training a group of warriors on how the Westerners war, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes and if that'll be the very thing that gives Toronaga the upper hand or if it will go against him because the Japanese warriors might not be used to that style of fighting. With a week to go until the next episode, I already can't wait. So, there you have it, Shogun Episode 3 Ending Explained. Thanks for tuning into the video, I'll see you in the next one.